This channel is for immature audiences only. It is not for children, only for childish adults. We might play some video games that kids also like, but we say words like fuck and shit with alarming frequency and make crude, inappropriate, and morbid jokes all the damn time. Level 0 NPCs assumes no responsibility if your idiot spawn watches this and gets traumatized. Hello everyone! Welcome to the very first episode of the Level Zero NPCs <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Insert name here. We don't have a name yet. Yeah. We don't have a name yet. Insert name here. We're the Level Zero NPCs, and uh, we're going to introduce ourselves. My name is Matt. Hello, Matt. Uh, Nick. Hey. Uh, <laughs> next up, we have someone just got to talk. Are we actually going to say like who we are aside from our names, or should we have some sort of order that we know? Well, <laughs> yeah, we the, don't have a uh, yeah. This I is... think that's. Well, I should be last. You told us all to introduce ourselves, but you didn't give us a marching order. This is a disaster. Yeah. Pull, pull. I'm, oh I'm looking God. forward to it. Pull the plug. Let's do it. Pull the plug. <laughs> Start over. I, pull the plug now. If you look, if you do, haven't watched our YouTube channel before and you don't know what you're getting yourselves into, this is a pretty good like uh, like representative sample of what you're likely to see over yeah. the course of the next forty minutes to an hour. Mm. Dis- yeah, disorganized fun. Yeah, yeah, it may be. Uh, Fun is yeah. relative. Fun is yeah. yeah fun I mean, is some relative. people have fun. Disorganized is is universal. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, there's a reason we call ourselves the Level Zero NPCs. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those of you who are not uh, watching our channel, we we play uh, retro video games on YouTube. So we do. go check us out there. Mm. Or don't. Whatever. Whatever. We play Fuck some of them do well, but right. most of them not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I am Luke. I am the guy that edits the videos. I am the uh, pedantic one. Uh, I uh... <laughs> Luke is the mama bear. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, Luke I'm the, keeps us in line. I'm the serious one. Yeah, that uh, that sometimes says dark and horrible things. Um, <laughs> and I uh, I am a producer for video games for a living. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next up, we have uh, uh, a guy who's been with us for several years now. Uh, my brother, Andrew. Go ahead. Uh, and so I Talk. am Andrew. I am one of our Western Canada correspondents. Um, <laughs> I am uh, in IT support as well as a musician. And I'm always the one that tries to uh, provide a quick, smart-ass remark at the uh, most opportune times. You always got to have the last word. I like it. It's perfect. I'm in. That's why I, I, I love leave, it. Leave the recording going at the end of every episode of our YouTube. Absolutely, channel. I look forward to it. <laughs> every, it, it it's and the it's the mental equivalent of everybody turning and looking at Andrew to see if he's going to something to say at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. A lot of pressure. There yeah. is a lot of pressure, but of pressure. you know, you roll with the punches. You're a pro. You got <laughs> this. Uh, next up, the uh, third uh, longest with us is is. Uh, our buddy, Alex. Go ahead, Alex. Hey, I'm uh, Alex, uh, to the Level Zero NPCs. I mostly contribute games to play that nobody asked for. Uh, <laughs> I work uh, with Luke in video games. I'm a technical artist, a job which is interesting, but not concise enough to explain here. <laughs> <laughs> technical artist what is that it's all the stuff that nobody else wants to do yeah it's basically <laughs> the technical shit that an artist doesn't want to do and the artistic stuff that programmers don't want to do yeah i am uh i'm a sort of it's a meaty little niche i'm sort of a video game day walker if you will <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. something totally. that producers and designers like myself who are basically hacks that pretend that we belong in the industry uh can never help to do. And like Blade himself, I am feared and hated by artists and programmers alike. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed vampires and humans. I'm not, well. not popular with any demographic. Yeah, I, Alex is the youngest of all of us, um, but he has a soul that is far older than all of us combined. <laughs> I, I, I or say. a weariness at the very least. A weariness that, that comes with age. <laughs> yeah. Um and last and and I mean and possibly least I don't know let's find out Lou howdy we got a Lou and a Luke yeah we do I mean we could we could call you Lewis I guess make it easier same initials as well I'm Lewis I'm from New Zealand I am the newest 
and perpetual probationary NPC. Uh, yeah. And and I do editing and animation freelance. Hey, hey. we should get Lewis to do some editing. We How could? come we've never thought of that before? <laughs> Mostly because I've just been doing it by default for the last five years. So yeah, uh, I'm hardly going to yeah. budge in and go, "Hey, Luke, step aside." <laughs> <laughs> if we combined oh. Lewis and Luke into a single person, uh, that entity's name would be Luke, spelled L-E-U-W-K. <laughs> Luke. <laughs> Luke. Since you've started down this rabbit hole, I'm going to see what you do with the surname. <laughs> oh, so we got a, a Roscoe and a Ra- Ross Scout. Ride Scout? Ross, Ross Ride Scout? Scout? Ride yeah, Scout? Roscoe and... Um, Rideco. Is it? Ride out, yeah. Luke, is it Rideco or Ride Out? Cause... It's Ride Out. Uh, I'm ride sure out. that sometime, uh, somewhere in the deep past, it may have been pronounced with a more French uh, intonation. But uh, as far back as I can draw the Ride Out lineage it's all been in basically great britain and like scotland right. so because that was that was my assumption being a ignorant uh, kiwi i just thought well he's canadian and that looks you know decidedly french so yeah the the best theory of my lineage is that ride out comes from outrider like you know Ooh. somebody yeah Ooh. placed by nobody's Ooh. rules but his own nice <laughs> That's uh, and, uh, and, that's and cooler than most. Our uh, our sort of primary host and the funny guy of the show, uh, Matt. Matt. Oh God, I I would prefer to remain a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> International man of mystery. I I my name's Matt. I uh, I'm I'm an I I'm an artist. I I draw things, but I also. Um, have this intense desire to be the center of attention and um <laughs> that's why i'm here it's part of the reason anyway um ask andrew he grew up with me he knows i called this all <laughs> the way a... back in 88 <laughs> <laughs> wow there you go see i told you yeah and uh yeah i'm i'm uh, i live in nova scotia nova scotia canada which is where most yeah. of us met uh well i mean matt and andrew met as children when they were you know <laughs> children together but alex and i uh both worked in the games industry in nova scotia for a while and then we met matt and the rest is basically history and then yeah. lewis was a, a fan of the youtube channel that's right that's yeah. right i just i just literally stalked my way in here <laughs> as yeah. you do um, I, it, as you do yeah, and for those so, of you who who aren't already familiar with level zero NPCs and why the hell you would be listening to this uh, for any other reason, I have no idea. But uh, we also, once again, we do play retro video games. If you want to check out our channel, we have about five years worth of content and over a thousand videos at uh, YouTube.com/slash Level Zero NPCs. It's true. Mm. Some of them are funny. Yep. Go check it out. And the zero <laughs> is the number, like L E V E L zero NPCs. Mm-hmm. Yes, for sure. Yep. Uh, so we're trying this out because over the last uh, playthrough we've been doing, there's been a lot of grinding in the playthrough mm-hmm. of uh, Quest for Glory 2. And what we found ourselves doing is defaulting into sort of a podcast anyway. So what we're going to do is we had we, we were like, this is, this is great. We should just do this. So here we are. Mm-hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw some topics out and we're just going to, we're just going to, sh- I don't know, shoot the shit. Just figure out, you know, see what works. Yeah. I don't know. It's very experimental. They're You're really part of something, guys. Yeah, yeah. We've, uh, we've discussed potential themes. We're just going to kind of throw spaghetti at the wall this time. And we'll see where we go from here. Yeah, like this could change drastically from episode to episode. <laughs> Absolutely. We don't know. But I'll tell you, there will be a, a strong leaning towards... Uh, if, any, if you've seen our show, you know there's a strong leaning towards uh, media... And uh, from from like the eighties and nineties and early two thousands, we we have a, we got a, we have a nostalgia factor here for sure. Mm-hmm. So we will be focusing a lot on that. Um, although occasionally we will like answer questions like, "What is the worst language?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. a, a, as a group of man children who are never really forced to grow beyond uh, adolescence in our minds. Uh, that's pretty much where we stopped. So, 
Uh, the I work, actually the... think the most growing you do is when you are between leaving home and being either in a long term relationship or married. Because the minute you're with a with a lovely partner, they tend to mother you. <laughs> I think that's when you go <laughs> back to being like you're back at home again. That's possibly true. Uh, oh the, my god! The worst language is termite. <laughs> so, yes yeah, it's, it's perfect heavy on the vomit and the smells i imagine that's yeah. probably the worst language oh. is there even is it like is that even the language well they're you social so the communication's pretty elaborate yeah i mean anyway we we would have to set some ground rules for what yeah. a language really is wait so so by what they vomit up it's actually a message yeah termites yeah. and ants it's mostly smells um, and it's totally self-organizing, which is pretty elaborate. Uh, bees, I, I can't give bees the worst language because it's actually a remarkably complex language. A bee can communicate the exact distance to a thing and the direction with little dances and stuff like that. So it's actually quite a remarkable That's it. Language. We all need to learn bee. <laughs> Everybody be, learn learn a couple words in bee for next week, yeah. please. If, if any of you do learn bee, please contact a scientist because that would be invaluable. <laughs> Uh, if scientists any scientist, could, any scientist at all, basically, yeah, find find someone in uh, go to your local science facility, and yeah. uh, any and any scientist, rocketry, engineering, chemistry, Cause, cause they'll, tell them that you can in front of the door of your science emporium, and, prove to uh, them that you can speak B. Yeah, uh, do a yeah. little dance and say, you know what I mean, and they'll yeah. you know call the police I, no uh, aquaman a bunch of bees to your beard <laughs> like just call all the bees in the area as aquaman calls sea creatures because it would be very useful for scientists to communicate directly with bees because they're very important i am google mapping a local it, science facility as we speak <laughs> <laughs> the problem with a uh, podcast format unfortunately they only have a uh, businessman facilities <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so the problem with a podcast format uh, is that if any of us were indeed speaking B, you probably wouldn't notice. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matt knows. The, uh, you know, I don't know. Well, I think you'd know. We're not graceful people. You know, you'd hear us moving around quite a bit. You wouldn't know yeah. what it was, but you could tell we were moving. It would be a slightly yeah. less palatable format than the current one. <laughs> yes <laughs> all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to our first topic uh we've got uh last night luke was like we're we're doing a podcast so instead of going into a blight this was last night he said maybe we should have a theme i think it was Any saturday ideas? night and we are recording on monday so we at least had 24 hours but it was though this was yesterday. Was it? I, there is a timestamp. I can't hide behind. Uh, my, there is my at at, at one o four p.m. Yeah, you wrote that. Nobody wrote anything for the next seven hours. Yeah, there you go. And, it was it was ten a.m. <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. And seven hours and then, passed, and that Matt like. And you then I was like, go through the list. For seven yes, okay, hours, so, everyone turned their nose up at it. <laughs> I was I was uh, putting my uh, my my five year old daughter to bed, and she was she was just trying to get to sleep. But I said I'd, I'd hang out with her, so I'm I'm lying there uh, as she's trying to get to sleep, and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to write as many of these as I can. So I wrote best '80s teen protagonists, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. analyzing the number one, the first in a franchise, sequels that were better than the first. Hidden gems of the 80s. 90s movies. Were they for idiots? Sierra Games and their dead ends. Bad design or trailblazing? Dan Aykroyd. Friend or foe? That one is intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> you could really make a case for either. You could. I need to uh, Jeff Roven. For that one. Yes, yeah. Jeff Roven, The Killing Joke. Uh, if th- those of you who don't know Jeff Roven... You're lucky. <laughs> he knows good, you. Good job. He he knows you though. You can bet he does. He's right behind you right now. <laughs> uh, he's kind of like the mascot of this show in many ways. <laughs> kind of weirdly. Uh, we'll get into that Super eventually, Nintendo without a yeah. doubt. Oh yeah. 
Super Nintendo and Genesis, Boring Kids versus Sociopaths. I think you know which one's which. Uh, the best Christopher Walken roles and where to find them. The best what the fuck moments in 80s, 90s movies and games. How Italian was Daniel LaRusso really? I mean, for the for Karate Kid, man. It's a, you know, if you, if you watch the show, you know our obsession with Karate Kid. Jocks and Assholes, the best teen villains. The best dad mustaches in an 80s or 90s movie. Sam Elliott, moving on. What the on. hell is a... Oh, Richard Mazur. To be continued, sir. To be continued. Oh, yeah. keep, keep on going. Keep on going. <laughs> right, right. What the hell is up with Crispin Glover? Ideal 80s movie girlfriends. Jerking off to Sharon Stone posters. Becoming a man before the internet. It's a coming of age story, really. It is. It's a... You, you, uh, yeah. You don't know. It, it was a rough time. Mario Paint, the best NES game. Nice. Jessica Rabbit and Lola Bunny dipping in ink. I don't know what we're gonna do with that. I don't know. <laughs> the the uh, weird case that uh, that converted many people of our generation to furries. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. I guess uh, the best Jessica sorry? Rabbit wasn't really, but still. No, well. Anyway, still, still. Yeah. Uh, the best worst horror movies of the 80s The Matrix Trilogy It was really only one movie, right? <laughs> the best Sean Bean deaths LucasArts Somebody was on coke <laughs> 12 year old boys Then and now Not like that You <laughs> sick bastards <laughs> We can all relate to being a 12 year old boy yep. Here yep. So that's all that's I'm true. saying That's all, you know sure. the, the lived uh, experience of being 12 years old In different decades yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And and I have a I have a twelve year old son right now, so I can tell you what kids are into now, and it's it's terrifying. <laughs> uh, next topic: redheads. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Tom Cruise, like, is he okay? <laughs> Marvel movies. All we had was Blade back then. You young fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Strong men do cry, weeping like a man. The most forgettable 90s movies, a decade of pablum on film. <laughs> New Zealand and Canada, why are we so hilarious? We're not. It's a, it's, it's a, we it's are. A... Trust me. You shut Maybe... the fuck up. <laughs> you shut the fuck up, New Zealand. <laughs> uh, shit that <laughs> the shit we're into that nobody else is. Uh, a frank discussion on country music. <laughs> Canadian rock versus American rock in the 80s The best 80s and 90s movie insults Jurassic Park, Ellie Sadler and Muldoon Shippers Unite <laughs> Star Trek, the best of just okay Star Trek 4, Whale Vaginas And Guilty Pleasures, sorry, not sorry Those are all the ones that I came up with in the span of what? God, that was 8.30, 8.30, 8.30. Okay, I did that in 15 minutes, all you, of that. You really missed your calling nice. for writing headlines for tabloid magazines. <laughs> <laughs> so if any of those topics intrigue you and you would like to hear them addressed in an episode that we do not address today, let us know. Yeah, like, we've done 20 minutes of intro. This is not going to be the case every Absolutely. episode. It's just, yeah. it's just the first episode, you know? We are better than you know. this. Yeah, hopefully. You can email us at uh, level0npcs at gmail.com. Uh, yeah, that's professional. <laughs> or you that. can mail us at, Jesus. you know, Luke or Matt at gmail. or at uh, level0npcs.com, which will forward to level0npcs at, at gmail.com. No, don't tell them that. Don't that's tell that's them that. <laughs> Don't tell them that. <laughs> it'll, it'll it will give you the illusion of choice. Yeah. You, you can also uh, fax us by email. This episode of the Level Zero NPCs <laughs> podcast not sponsored by Squarespace. Do you know Richard Majeur was in 80 films? That motherfucker was a legend. <laughs> Is he dead? He's dead, right? Uh, hold on. He, I gotta no, check. He, There's he's, gonna, not, the, he's not dead. He's alive? He's Do you know one. who is dead? Yeah, Wolford Brimley, my god. Like... The guy who you were sure was dead throughout the entirety of the 2000s yeah. recently Pretty finally much. passed That's away. That's accurate. And I mean, like, I don't say that like, oh, finally, but like, you know, <laughs> I expected it sooner. <laughs> finally. Was it the diabetes? Diabetes. I, 
I loved I Wilford Brimley. I definitely did not great. think of Wilford Brimley as a person <laughs> who was alive. Exactly. Since college 10 years ago. <laughs> I think we were talking about him just the other week, weren't we, on Level Zero? Oh, yeah. Like, well, he comes up frequently. Um, but, like, it, and, and you haven't really seen him in much of anything recently. I'm pretty sure that he's, like, retired. But he was doing diabetes commercials and like Quaker Oats for the longest um, fucking time. Yeah, that's right. Diabetes. That uh, that Brimley oh, sure. existed yeah. in a post nine eleven world is just tremendous. <laughs> so here's here's where the, this is where this happens, okay? Because in the movie Cocoon, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I looked this up yesterday. Go on. Uh, he, he played a retiree. Mm-hmm. All and right, a, a, and this was in nineteen eighty five. All right. So in the year 1985, he was playing an old fucking man yeah. mm-hmm. uh, back then. And so for our entire memories, that guy has just been an old fuck. <laughs> yeah. so, he wasn't even a and, particularly young man in John Carpenter's The Thing. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. In fact, uh, but, but here's the, here's the, the kicker. Uh, Wilford Brimley, when he was in Cocoon, was only 55. Wow. He just had a prematurely old look about him. Yeah. So dude just aged really poorly. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like that guy was not old, but yet he was he was pretending to be an older gentleman. Uh unlike the the rest of the the old people cast who were uh, genuinely quite quite ancient. And uh, all of them yeah, are Yeah, like Don Amici was in that, wasn't he? he was... Don Amici, Jessica Tandy. Oh. Jessica Tandy and and uh, her husband Hume Cronin in real life, they all dead. Well, there I mean, must be a commodity in acting: the ability to pass for an old person while still being, you know, young or middle aged, fairly young. Yeah, it's like, oh, are, the... you're auditioning for old man number five. Uh, <laughs> how you, how are... you, you look? Uh, you look quite old. What are you seventy? It's like, no, I'm thirty four. It's like, oh wow, <laughs> Jesus, we could we, we could put you in the next ten of these, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys remember uh, the Saturday Night Live skit, "The Curse of Cocoon"? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, no, back in, I think it was in I think it was in the nineties uh, when when some of the people from that movie started to die. Uh, they were like the curse of Cocoon. It it seems as if the the movie Cocoon is cursed as people keep dying. <laughs> <laughs> That's so rough. <laughs> Who will be next? It was it was a it was it was not a funny joke, oh. but it was executed well. Oh, Wolford had a good twenty five years uh, on that one, then. Yeah, motherfucker was still kicking up until like a couple days ago. I, I, I practically see him every day, though. I mean, when you own a pug, you you pretty much you see Wolford Burma every, every day. <laughs> well, rest in peace, buddy. Yeah, in peace, uh, had a good run. You had a good run. Great, great name. Wilfred Brimley. Yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. Even the name feels old. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and it's one of those things. Like, he played an old man a long time ago, and then he just kept popping up on TV and doing things like eating old people food. Oatmeal. Mm-hmm. Yep. And complaining about having diabetes. Which is, you know, that's a full-on disease. I'm not <laughs> sure that Wilford is a name. <laughs> apart from being the first name of Wilfred Brimley. Similarly, I'm not sure that Brimley is a surname for anyone <laughs> apart from Wilfred Brimley. Those names don't go to anyone else. It's kind of no. a... Are you suggesting that he's some sort of construct? No. He's a unique entity. It's it's like an, an Engelbert Humperdinck kind of situation. <laughs> is, he, is he a construct? Yeah. What was your first... The first time you saw Wilfred Brimley on anything? Oh. Hmm. It would probably be I a think... thing for me. For me, it was, I, it was the TV show Our House, if you remember that. Oh, oh my god. That was the... Te- I remember seeing that as a child on television, and that was my first introduction to Wilfred Brimley's amazing mustache and dark shape. Wow! And you know, it's weird, because he did a couple things without his mustache. Yeah. And it, it's, it, it's not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> no. uh, I'm actually not sure I've seen Wilfred Brimley in anything, ever. <laughs> Uh, because, uh, I'm, as Matt mentioned, younger than the, the rest of the crew. I'm 31, born in 89. And, uh, 
when I was uh, young, we didn't we didn't have uh, a TV for a lot of years. Um, and when we did have a TV, we didn't have much by way of channels, just what you could get with the rabbit ears. Um, so I just didn't see a lot of stuff. There was a lot of stuff that I just just couldn't watch. And then there was a further level of sort of censorship on what we could watch. So there was only certain shows we were allowed to watch once we did have access to sort of TV shows. Um, so by the time I had a certain amount of uh, independence over what I watched on TV, I suspect Brimley's heyday on the commercial circuit had probably lapsed. <laughs> you missed out, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I've I, seen clips of him. I don't think I've ever seen him in anything. I haven't seen any of the movies you guys have referenced so far. You've probably seen his oatmeal commercials and his diabetes commercials. Yeah, I think uh, Family Guy but... did him a real solid with um, <laughs> some of their some of their takes on, on his diabetes. <laughs> I can't digest my food, and I'm impatient with my family. <laughs> <laughs> or something to that effect. <laughs> something like something like I found, just found out I, I struck my wife I, and then I just found out my wife's been dead for three years. Who the hell did I hit? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man, goddamn! Mm-hmm. Rest in peace, Rest in peace. Yeah, I think the first thing I think the first thing Andrew and I saw him in was a uh, probably in 1986. Uh, when Ewoks, the battle for Endor, came on TV <laughs> on CBC. <laughs> oh, shit. I probably saw that before the thing. Yeah. yeah. Ewoks, battle for Endor. The fourth best Star Wars film. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no! If I can just mention as well, um, Alex's uh, uh, watching TV during upbringing sounds just about the exact opposite of mine and Matthew's. Um, <laughs> we- yeah! <laughs> We, we, we had a pirated satellite system, and so, you know, we were watching all kinds of shit from the age of 11, so. Oh, man. We had, yeah, we had access. Nice. nice. We were jacked in. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but we can talk more about that uh, during the uh, jerking off to Sharon Stone posters. What, what jerking <laughs> off to Wilford Brimley? <laughs> We, we we can get yeah. into the Spice Channel and pirated pay per view. I mean, yeah. hey, if any of you out there have jerked off to Wilford Brimley, we'd like to know. Yeah, like whatever to turns your crank. Like... Send your send us an email. We'll give you a shout out. <laughs> well, similar to being a valuable commodity in the acting circuit, as a man who seems old but is young enough that he could be in many future projects, he's yeah. sort of. He has that sort of aspect of being from an older generation while being from a slightly younger generation. And if you're into a certain old-fashioned type of dude, then, uh, yeah, you, yeah. Brim, you, you, you could definitely be brimly sexual. <laughs> I know. I know there's there's quite a few people that would uh, have a love to ride that mustache. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. So, uh, yeah, the, uh, rest in peace, man. Yeah. Hope everything's yeah. cool. You get the level zero uh, st- stamp of much respect. Wilford Brimley was only just slightly younger than Rue McClanahan. Yeah. Rue McClanahan? <laughs> Who would have fucking called that, eh? I know. That 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 <laughs> Wilford Brimley would have outlived Rue McClanahan. Yep. I mean, like, there was a there was a period of time in the late two uh, thousands. Uh, where everybody but Betty White that was on uh, the Golden Girls just like ultimately um, died, but uh, yeah, apparently he was like uh, just a few months younger than Rue McClanahan. Wow, crazy shit. life, eh? Life, it's just one of those things, you know. You never speaking know what's going to happen. Yeah, speaking of people who uh, who looked older than they actually were, like good old Estelle Getty, the youngest of the Golden Girls. Oh yeah, actually, like even when she was like in her normal form, <laughs> her <laughs> normal form, <laughs> not in vehicle mode. Yeah, not in vehicle mode. <laughs> I believe her vehicle mode. She turned into uh, a moped. I'm guessing a Ford Model T. <laughs> yeah, she was significantly younger than the rest of them. But a, uh, a sop with camel by a number of years. Not not that much. Like I was just looking them all up. But, Hang on. She was like, yeah. Estelle yeah. Giddy was born in 23. Uh, yeah. Rue McClanahan was born in 34. B. 
Betty I'm Arthur saying, was born yeah. in 22, and Betty White was born in 22 as well. Actually, yeah, yeah. Estelle Betty Giddy was in the middle. Betty was a year older than her. If you're listening to this and you have a vehicle mode, please go to your local science facility. So we'll be very keen to talk to you. Please like, seek out a scientist. The discovery that all humans have a vehicle mode would revolutionize the transportation <laughs> industry. I like, I like and to therefore think when, humanity. What, it was, what is this like you're a shitty version the... of Animorphs but cars? Oh yeah. <laughs> A, a, sh- a shitty version of Animorphs, eh? Was there a good version? <laughs> I'd like to know. I'd like to see that one. Please direct me to the good version of Animorphs. <laughs> Please. Let me know that exists. Uh, yeah, I, I think it'd be, it'd be cool. I mean, uh, there was a good version of Animorphs. It was called Transformers Beast Wars. Whoa, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, here's a topic. If you guys could turn into a vehicle, what vehicle would it be? Ooh. If you had to pick one vehicle mode, if you were a Cybertronian, that's a that's like a tough one. I, I'm not a car guy, so it's going to be something dumb. Can I? Can we all agree that Astro Train is the fucking worst, <laughs> <laughs> or the best? He can turn into a train or a space shuttle, and I don't want to be either of those things. <laughs> you only use a space shuttle to go to space. Yeah, but Astro Train is an awesome name. It is a good name. But I mean, you can <laughs> also it's it's way cooler than say cargo ship. A, a great name for a band. But you, lots of transformers, lots of transformers with shitty forms had cool names. So you could just have a cool form and a cool name. Ah, uh, yes, the sound wave factor. Yeah, or and uh, yeah, and like perceptor sound wave who did not have a vehicle form at all. <laughs> no, I'll allow an appliance. He wa- he was an inanimate household object. <laughs> if if you want to be an appliance, I'll allow it. Back, okay. back when boomboxes uh, were so ubiquitous, you had two Transformers that were them. I, I can't think of anything other than being a, a bus. A bus? Like a, one of the shitty buses, you, like you're walking through the forest and you come across a bus with no wheels. <laughs> Your vehicle form. That's you having a nap. Oh, so an abandoned bus or one of those, like a hippie house bus? Yeah, it had an original color once, but nobody knows what it is. And now it's got wood sidings and a chimney in the back. And bees. Yeah, it's very rusty. Uh, There's leaves, and I have a stash of porn under one of the seats. If if you could turn into a non-ruined bus, that would actually be a pretty great alternate form, right? Because, let's face it, if you can turn into a fighter jet, you're going to die. Like, you're, you're going to get yourself killed <laughs> being a fighter jet. It's just, that's not sustainable, no matter how you look you're at it. You're shit at being a fighter jet, you're dead. You will be dead on day one. <laughs> yeah, like, you don't, do you know how to fly a fighter jet? Then you're going to die. But you would be it. Right? But a, bu- a bus, if you had to go somewhere, it's like, if you just board one day, it's like, okay, you know what? Bus mode. Everybody climb in. And you get to use the bus line. <laughs> if everybody climb in, we're going to fucking Montreal. Today, we're doing that. Everyone climb inside me. Boom, yeah. get in. Bring 60 of your closest friends. We're all going to Montreal. Everybody get inside me. We're going to Quebec. <laughs> I'm just not happy about any of that. Bus is pretty good. Pretty good. Like, yeah, if you're going to be some sort of an uh, an aerial uh, transformer, and I mean, like, in all fairness, that's probably the ideal form, because then you can get to anywhere without having to, like, worry about traffic and all that bullshit. Um, something veto would probably be ideal. I don't know. Like, I- as soon as you turn into anything cool, someone's going to shoot you down. <laughs> it's tough being an aircraft. So, like, let's say that you have an intuitive grasp for how to pilot yourself. So yeah. you turn into a helicopter. Amazon delivery drone form. Yeah, even then, your chances of getting shot down are still pretty high. Yeah, Maybe people despise down. drones. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> They're going to get net gunned. Don't, don't be a Zeppelin. I think maybe you could be a bicycle with wings. <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to get away with bicycle that. Bicycle plus maybe. ET. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Like a- any flying vehicle is going to get shot down by a government. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just going to happen. Yeah, you could probably get away with a helicopter for a while if you weren't like a military helicopter. It's Someone like a- would enough people would mistake you for a normal sort of medical helicopter. Like a news chopper. Yeah, I, I got it. You, you I got could- it. Klingon bird what? of prey. What? Oh come on now! <laughs> harass the you know harass the Norwegian fishing people. You know? The Norwegian <laughs> fishing people. <laughs> no one could see you. Are you saying? 
that you come you come fully equipped with a cloaking device. Yeah, no one can see you. You're sorted. Yeah, and a crew of Klingons. Nah, you. But you are the bird of prey. You don't need a crew. But you would want one. It's a. Uh... It would be yeah, challenging to turn into a starship, though. Just to it, it would be like being uh, an aircraft carrier, right? You're going to need a lot of space to stretch those legs. Yeah, that's true. You would either have to be incredibly <laughs> dense or incredibly brittle in your vehicle form at that point. Yeah, it's a good. It oh, just all your human atoms spread out <laughs> like a thin shell over the frame of a Klingon bird, bird of prey. Thinner than tissue paper. <laughs> <laughs> Just a strong breeze destroyed. Or a human being who weighs 80 tons. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I think that's a good answer, but I don't think it's... Uh, it's I don't it's, think it's, it's the it's right plausible. one. It's not the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've you've answered the letter of the law there, but you have definitely violated the spirit of the law. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think what I think one thing you can do is you can uh uh you can like I we shouldn't be be able to be sci-fi things. No. I think I think because that's like I used to play Lego a long time ago, not that long ago, but but a while ago. A few weeks and with, with some maybe of, last week with, with with some of my friends. Yeah, but this is back like this is back a while ago and they used to make these intricate robots that would fight each other like they had all these like these moving parts and it was like it was really cool but i didn't understand that that was what was cool about it i thought that you needed to just win so i used to make (laughs) blocks with one part that would come down and smash them (laughs) you were you were the hammer and they fucking hated it. They hated it. How long were they your friends? And I'm like, what? That's how you win. We were like, we were, I'd rather not say how old we were when we were doing this. 25. <laughs> it was around that. It was around 20. <laughs> but I didn't get it. I didn't understand that, you know, it was, it was, the, the elegance was more important than the win. Um, I still, in many ways. Reminiscent of another recent tragic loss of uh, Grant Imahara. His, uh. His oh. robot wars things were uh, were kind of similar to that. Basically, just like a brick with an RC control, and then like a uh, a fucking like pick <laughs> on a. But that's one arm. of the that's that's like an example of of uh one hundred percent like getting the win at all costs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, totally. Taking it back to Lego, uh, did you ever find it more interesting to um build Lego cities or Lego? You know, like a little world you'd play with as opposed to fighting robots. I always, I always preferred, um, like sets and, and yeah, but like, and then I, I went through that robot phase. Right. Right. You know, but now, now I'm, I'm back to cities. Yeah. I buy, I, I have, I have a lot of the sets. I was always so. into the cities and I tell you what else, um, was great was, uh, micro machines. If you remember them, they were fantastic. Who yeah, cities with them. For uh, for Lego, I would usually build sort of uh, like fleets of starships. I, I rarely kept the sets for long. I'd usually scrap them all for parts. So I would just build spaceships and crew them with you know hodgepodged together yep. like first edition like episode one Star Wars people and like fucking <laughs> rock raiders and Lego space police and <laughs> just mishmash those concepts together to get sort of a crew yeah goodness uh, you would have uh, um alex you would have been you would have been 10 when episode one came out yeah i'm the same age as the guy who played anakin skywalker wow Damn. so i mean i was very much the i was very much the i was the demographic for that shit do you, do you like sand uh how do you i'm, I'm what you know you feel? i'm, I'm sand indifferent sand? i i wasn't very picky <laughs> when those movies came out so i mean i i didn't think too poorly of the episode one uh, sequels yeah yeah i guess you it would have been all new you were you were who it was for i mean like let's let's all face it star wars is not written for the star wars grognards no and in a post in a post like sequel trilogy world i think the prequels have come to uh age well i think people are like mm. yeah there's a lot of problems with them but at the end of the day there's quite a bit to like in those prequels. I think now. it's... Go on. 
So I was going to say, I think it's dangerous to need the things that you like to be good if yeah. you didn't make them. Like, if you're making something and you want it to be good and you like it, great. Like, try to make a good thing. So did everyone who worked on Star Wars, man. <laughs> like, they all really tried hard to make something that was good. They had probably radically different opinions about what that would mean, and it didn't necessarily come together into a successful piece. But, like, yeah, I mean, I like Star Wars. I love me a good lightsaber fight. It's yeah. not necessarily a prerequisite for me that all of its installments are actually good. Because yeah. most of... I most of my Star Wars fandom was like making a little Lego guy, putting a Star War, uh, putting a, a a lightsaber in his hand, and you know having him befriend some Lego Ewoks or whatever. It was mostly like you know mostly happened in my own head. It was a happy yeah. story. That's a happy story. I can uh, I can appreciate that on one level. I really can. Like I feel like I don't feel like you're you're entitled to anything good, uh, but I I feel like you should be able to. Ex- Expect a certain amount of quality from 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 things that get that much money thrown. At yeah, yeah. I remember watching when people are dying in the, in the world <laughs> <laughs> just to put the weight of the world on it. I watched uh, uh, Batman versus Superman a few years ago with Matt, and he was he oh. was he was so fucking upset when we came out. <laughs> and like, I, I that's not unreasonable to be upset about it. It's something that you cared about. And somebody thought yeah. they could make money off of how much you care about this thing. And it was handled yes. less than sensitively and less than accurately. Uh, it's reasonable to be upset about that sort of thing. It's, yeah. an, easy, it's an easier movie for me to watch because I don't you know, particularly care about Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. It's, they're, they're all right, wow. right? But they're not my, you yeah. know, not my favorites. Well, and, and I think you need to have an appreciation for a lot of bad stuff. I think it's, it's nice to, to like bad shit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, like I think, and, and I think that's one thing, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm actually sure you just check. <laughs> uh, all of us are kind of, uh, that's one thing we all have in common. There's a, there's a lot of bad shit that we actually love and, um, we should talk about that sometime. Yeah. For sure. Cool. Bad shit we love. Bad yeah. shit we love. I think it would require more thought. I think we need to come with a list. Yeah. Godzilla 1984. Uh, like, off, We've gotten off, off topic, though. We, totally we, we know that Matt's yeah. going to turn into a bus. Uh, Let's get back to the yeah, bus. Yeah, I'm turning into a bus. <laughs> uh, you can't... Uh, Lewis, you're not allowed to turn into a, a bird of prey. Sorry. Uh, overruled. <laughs> You can't turn into a bird of prey. That's not We're fair. We're gonna have to give you a yellow card on that. I'm not playing. Like, <laughs> yes. You, you, you know what? You don't play this game. You don't get to play anymore. I'm gonna ring my mom. <laughs> you, if you call your mom, I'm gonna punch you. <laughs> That's this is my one of my favorite Matt characters, and also my absolute least favorite. It's, it's both at once. <laughs> It's like oh, man. Matt the Mickey Mouse slash child. One time, <laughs> Tyler Sulking Mickey didn't Mouse. play with us anymore. No, he doesn't play with us anymore. He's dead. He died. <laughs> Jesus. He, he, he died in a car crash because oh, wow. he didn't play with serious. us anymore. So, this, this can't be the podcast. That was Cap. <laughs> <laughs> that was captivating, though. There were twists and turns there. In that ten yeah, seconds, man, it I'm went just dark saying, fast. That was a uh, that was hundred percent an experience that I had as a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I I'm not making that up. That is true. Someone once told me that when I wanted to leave a game. Oh wow! Well, you, you, I bet you. St- I changed the name. Did you stay for the game? Uh, I did. I was afraid I was going to die in a car crash. <laughs> As uh, as we say in the uh, podcasting world, yeah, that, that that was good tape. Good tape. <laughs> good tape. Uh, okay, so you know, pick something else. <laughs> uh, here's the thing: what what's happened with this whole question is is that people have uh, given their answers from the heart. And we've told them no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's not that I don't accept a Klingon bird of prey as an answer. There were transformers that turned into spaceships and stuff. 
because they right. were alien beings and they turned into alien uh, ships, alien I'm, vehicles. I'm, I'm just worried about a game where the best answer is bus. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all I'm worried about. I stand behind down to my Amazon delivery drone. Uh, all right, that's fair. Oh, was, was that your answer? I thought that was your suggestion for Lou. <laughs> well, no, I was talking. I, I was saying, you know, the ideal form would be something airborne, but you wouldn't want something where you could, you would have to fly at multiple G's in a straight direction. You know, something drones a great answer, like like a, an yeah. Amazon delivery drone. Yeah, yeah. Dr- drones a fantastic answer, or even just like a camera drone. You could be such a great filmmaker if you could oh, yeah. become a drone. Yeah, like we need a drone shot, and you just become a drone, and you've got that. <laughs> The, You're the base curve in you, you, you've, you've got this thing that drones have where you can become stable as if you were rising on a pole, even in high winds and at high altitudes. So you'd get like this perfect camera shots and you wouldn't have to fuck around with technology so or devices because you are the drone. Great answer. would be the best freelance cameraman ever. Like literally you go on set and transform into a camera and because you are the camera, you just deliver the best footage. It's I, true. I could also. I also like it because I could see a modern reboot of uh, a Transformers movie. Um, this podcast just is just missing some some heavy LSD. Really, I mean, this would be a fantastic conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah. I, I could see a modern Transformers show having a Transformer that turned into a drone. It, it's very yeah. That's true. It's yeah, topical. Yeah. It's yeah. topical. Yeah. You also, sure. you, you would be great at robbing blimps too. That's true. <laughs> Notorious gold carrying blimp. You would you would only rob that that one transformer that turns into a blimp inexplicably in twenty twenty. But uh, <laughs> do, you, do you think anyone would really turn into a zeppelin? Like, has, it, has anyone here ever seen a blimp? I feel no. like there was a chance I saw one when I was a kid. I've definitely seen hot air balloons. But yeah, that yeah, but blimps like an actual like yeah, I think like, like back when the Goodyear blimp was still a thing, I'm pretty sure I saw one when I was a kid. I, I have no. Oh idea. yeah, you were in L.A. though. Uh, well, California. We didn't get blimps was, in Canada. I was well, California. In, in and around yeah, San Francisco, blimp central, San Francisco. Yeah, we we didn't we didn't have blimps in Canada. There yeah. were no blimps in Canada. <laughs> I don't think New Zealand has ever had a blimp ever. No, that would be a bad idea. It's it's a bad idea for it to have a Canadian or New Zealand blimp. I'm sure. Very windy. <laughs> Canada I, uh, and New uh, Zealand don't deserve yeah. blimps. Blow up a balloon and take it outside <laughs> in the winter. That's your explanation. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, true enough. See what happens. I, I grew up a lot in in not quite rural, but kind of middle of nowhere Atlantic Canada, like Grand Manan Island. I yeah. feel like it's not impossible that I've seen a blimp, but I certainly didn't register the memory. I, I might be thinking of a, there might have been a hot air balloon or something like that. It, it's very fuzzy. I think I was too young to quite parse it into memory. I don't think I've seen a blimp. I don't think that is one of those things. Like, I think we're a generation of non blimp seers. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know <laughs> what context a blimp could possibly have. To go to know. Grand Manan Island. What I'm curious about now is, were there ever any documented instances of blimp piracy? <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? Let's find out. Because, really, like, blimps are, you know. <laughs> I love saying the word blimp, by the way. I think blimp. Some B-L-I-M-P. I think there's some blimp piracy on that movie Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow, isn't there? Yeah, it's um, it's a whole steampunk thing. Because it's because it's a very uh, gradual ride up and a very gradual getaway. Oh my god. Okay, so there was a nineteen seventy seven movie called Black Sunday. Okay. And that's all you're gonna get. <laughs> yeah. The plot the plot is is that the Goodyear blimp gets hijacked by Palestinian terrorist <laughs> groups. Wow. What are they going to do with it? Uh, Okay, so what they're planning, they conspire to launch a suicide attack using a bomb composed of plastique and a quarter million steel flechettes. They plan to mount the bomb on the underside of the gondola of the Goodyear blimp and then fly it over the Super Bowl and detonate it during Super Bowl X. That's pretty odd. Wow. 
That's it. Wow. Intense. I I what love an... the seventies for like <laughs> disaster. Yeah, late seventies where they're like, yeah, we're we're setting the stage for what the eighties are about to become. <laughs> yeah. Robert Shaw, Bruce Dern. Oh my god. Wow, Robert this... Shaw's in it. Yeah, Robert Shaw and Bruce Dern both. Bruce they were like the headliners. Yeah. And uh John Williams did the music. Holy yeah. shit. I'm gonna have to watch it. How have I never yeah. seen how have I this ne- how movie? have we never heard of this film? So on the next uh, episode of the Level Zero podcast, we'll be uh, talking about Black Sunday after all of us haven't watched it. <laughs> <laughs> it would be Everybody, good to do a, a shitty movie club where we all watch a movie and yeah. discuss it after. I think we should try to see if we can all watch Black Sunday I before next we'll be episode. <laughs> Uh, it, it it may sound like I'm married to the Transformer subject. I am actually not, but I have been trying to think of an answer to the question because I posed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and my two candidate answers are, one is 3D printer. It would be pretty cool because mm-hmm. you could just sort of make whatever substance. Assuming that in the same way that as an Amazon drone or a camera drone, you would have that sort of gyroscopic stability. Uh, so I'm assuming that as a 3D printer, I would have a way to be able to visualize something into slices to print it into liquid plastic. Well, Otherwise, let's it would just also be... hope that you would print faster than the average 3D printer. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm a I'm a reasonably patient guy. Just hang out. See the, the, the... <laughs> hold on, I'll be back in a week. I'm printing something today. The problem the problem I have with Kinda your answer like... though is it seems a little bit like well. If you had a genie that gave you three wishes, what would you wish for? It seems like a little bit of a I wish for more wishes type answer. It 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 is a bit wish for more wishes, but I mean a 3D printer can't print anything, especially most of your Well, I mean, I guess if I was one of the more expensive 3D printers, I could print simple machines and stuff like that. But the print time would as uh, as has been pointed out, it would be pretty fantastic. Like it would, would take ages. Would you look like a print a three D printer, or would you sort of just be a person that has the abilities of a three D printer? So, like, while you're printing, it's like, oh, do you need to go to the loo or something? Yeah, I think it would be less horrifying if I just turned into a three D printer because I think watching a person perform just, the acts of a three D printer, squatting, squatting, and, squatting, and squatting. Squatting over a tray and just extruding liquid plastic and screaming um, as I, I move think... with mechanical stability. Do you have the ability to produce your own plastic? Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, like, you never see them load Megatron <laughs> when he turns yeah, into no, a that's gun. That's true. If Megatron could be a gun with ammunition, then uh, Alex could be a uh, 3D printer with filament. Or maybe you... you... You get the um. You get stocked up by being in your human form and eating food. But okay. I assume Astro Train can fly around in space shuttle mode with an atmosphere, which would be impossible for a normal space shuttle. I think they're they need thrusters to take off, and they just kind of glide on landing. Uh, so I mean, I don't know exactly how much we like uh, fudge those numbers. So I I don't know, but I mean, I'll, I'll buy filament. I, <laughs> basically, you'd always have a free top end three D printer be worse yeah uh my second option is and i i i don't endorse owning firearms really and most people would need them for any practical purposes i think you know gun safety gun control is very important uh but a gun <laughs> pretty good form <laughs> because if you were in if you were in real danger you could just turn to a friend and say wield me and just turn into a gun <laughs> You jump like Megatron does. You do the backflip and turn into the gun. What about the argument for gun safety then? If you're on the piss and like someone says, "Hey, be that gun," and like you're really hammered, would that? Well, fortunately, you might fortunately, need to describe what "on the piss" means to the. Oh, listener. sorry. Okay, I beg your pardon. It's a, it's a it's a Kiwi slang for getting drunk. So gotcha. like, okay. So if you're sorry, if you're getting drunk and um. You know, you're out with friends and, want, and you know, you're all drunk and your friends say, hey, be the gun. <laughs> be the gun. <laughs> I, uh, I, so me specifically, I actually don't drink. So it wouldn't come up as a problem for me. Uh, uh, that, that specific case. It does raise some important questions. Like, not a big fan of gun, gun violence. And I don't love the idea of transforming into a weapon and then being used to kill. That doesn't sound like a great time. I was just trying to think of the most objectively useful appliance that you could turn into. <laughs> like, everyone else has turned it into a bus and, and a drone <laughs> and stuff like that. 
form of gum. We win. <laughs> like, so, you... <laughs> so, so if you hypothetically were someone who drank, when you were drinking, would you need to be locked into a safe? I think it would be wise. Like, you would have to... Like, it would be like having any really destructive superpower, I think. You'd really have to take precautions. Like, uh... Like, what happens if Superman gets gets drunk and starts showing off his laser eyes? That would be really yeah, horrible. That's you know, they've never addressed that. They have. Oh, There's a whole kryptonite that make him drunk. And he causes massive amounts of destruction. So he should not be allowed... <laughs> he, sh- he should have to stay away from people then, really. He, he, he really shouldn't be allowed, period. Yeah. He should not be allowed. <laughs> Many of the villains, I think, might be correct in that assessment of Superman. That, you th- that's you pretty think much Lex entirely Luthor has a point. Lex Luthor's like ethos, isn't it? Yeah. I don't, I'm yeah. not saying that Lex Luthor is right. I'm only saying that he might have some points. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Andrew, what would you ch- turn into? Okay, well, I have given this uh, question some thought. Um, and so... Making reference back to one of my favorite uh, cartoons growing up as a as a kid, which was sort of an offshoot of Transformers, it was a very great cartoon called Mask. Uh, I would want the ability to turn into a lime a lime green motorcycle that can also double as a helicopter, right? Or, con- right. or condor, why, why as it was known. Why why that and not a robot that could turn into a motorcycle? Well, what's the difference? Well. I, I wouldn't wish being T Bob on my worst enemy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go, go look, go look, go look up some T Bob on on YouTube and uh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna look up Condor right now. Uh, so there, there, this actually kind of works fairly well in the like framing device of Transformers forms because there were two form Transformers. It is a slight violation of the spirit of the question, but I actually listed two things as well, which I mean, I guess theoretically could be that I could be a 3D printer or a gun, which is a weird <laughs> range of things. Oh, oh, that. Oh, that. <laughs> I remember that yeah, That shit. vehicle is awesome. So essentially what it is, it's a motorcycle that has a uh, sort of a... Uh, a helicopter mounted on it, and it can, you know, so he can drive on road, and he can, it, you know, go in the air. It is tremendously dangerous. <laughs> yeah, that blade is that blade is inches from yeah, his the head. The FAA is going to have some and, problems and, with this. And the back wheel turns into the back rotor for the helicopter. Wow, that is, it is a combination of two of the least safe types of vehicle, <laughs> and it has become a vehicle less safe than the sum of its parts. So Brad, like Turner. Brad Turner, the, the 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 guy, the Brad Turner, the guy who drives that, must be the bravest mask guy. So don't do wheelies <laughs> and stand up because you will decapitate yourself. Yeah, balls of steel, Brad Turner. That's you, what they uh, call him. Fortunately, you're turning into this vehicle, and you don't require a passenger. Ah, yeah, of course, you're uh, a vehicle. Motorcycle and helicopter were were close runners up for me. I I don't. Um, my dogs hate the sound of motorcycles. They lose their minds barking at them, which has yeah. caused yeah. me to really loathe motorcycles and living anywhere near them. No, totally the same here. Uh, just because, like, it's a pointlessly loud vehicle tearing up and down the street. Dog barks. I shave a year off my life in frustration. <laughs> so I've, I've really grown to hate them. And helicopters, similarly. Um, I mean, not, not many people joy riding around in helicopters. Usually they're fulfilling some sort of practical purpose but they're they're two of the most noise polluting vehicles uh but the inner 10 year old in me has to admit that motorcycle and helicopter are probably the coolest vehicle what if i had some sort of uh uh, phasing noise cancellation contraption uh, installed on this would that make it a little bit better well, we ourselves are not actually Cybertronian. We're just flesh and blood people turning into mechanical devices in this hypothetical. Ooh, so there's well, that, that, that does seem like it would be quite um, graphic and gross, well, the concept. I'm, I'm guessing this is supernatural in okay. some way. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, it would have to be. Just lots of bone cracking noises as we transform into these things. Oh. You, you are, in this hypothetical, magically transforming into a motorcycle helicopter hybrid which itself okay. is probably magic so what you're describing is the 80s cartoon turbo teen <laughs> go on i should have known <laughs> yeah there's always going to be an 80s a... premise for anything you this can was... think of yeah this was on the cartoon express on usa network 
uh, back in 84. And Turbo Teen is about a teenager named Brett Matthews who swerves off a road during a thunderstorm. Yes, I remember this. And, and he crashes into a secret government laboratory, a science... Uh, yeah, That's where cool. scientists live. <laughs> there, he and his red sports car are accidentally exposed to a, molec- a molecular beam invented by a scientist named Dr. Chase for a government agent named Cardwell. Jeez. As a result, Brett and his car become fused together. <laughs> Brett, game- <laughs> Brett gains the ability to morph into the car when exposed to extreme heat. Yep. And I revert don't... to his human form. I don't yeah. like his transformation sequence. No, I'm looking at it now too, and I'm not happy about what I'm seeing. No, no, that's what I was gonna say. His transformation sequence is horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. We'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, with his uh, new superpower, uh, Brett, along with his girlfriend Patty, who's a freelance reporter, and his best friend Alex. A mechanic who calls Brett TT. <laughs> and his dog Rusty. And they go on crime fighting adventures together and solve other mysteries. Oh, this show looks amazing. It does look amazing. I also like that he is, because I'm watching some gifs of this, he oh. is essentially a wear car in that <laughs> he can adopt human form and car form, but oh he also my. seems to be able to oh. adopt a variety of hybrid forms where he's got like <laughs> wheels for hands and is just yes, I just around. watched I just watched the transformation that is awful when his, <laughs> his mouth expands to be the grill what the hell is that he, he just he turns he turns his his what I like about the transformation sequence is somebody really thought about this he turns his hands and feet into wheels and yep. plants them in the correct position and then his body just spills out over them <laughs> It's a car form. <laughs> so what's great about this is that he he sort of forms a stable base so he doesn't tip over mid-transformation. And his head is the last thing to transform. His head just turns into the front grill, yeah. and it's horrifying. It is horrifying. His, his eyes into the headlights, and oh boy. Yeah. It's just him getting down on the all fours to turn into a car. <laughs> it makes it the least cool superpower. <laughs> <laughs> but don't think for a second that if we were turning into things, it would look cool. No. So, no. Oh, uh, yeah, almost definitely. Like, but it's nice to know there's a template for that out there. <laughs> if, we were, if we were a bit more Cybertronian, then we might have a kind of cool, or at least mercifully abrupt transformation <laughs> sequence. There's a YouTube video titled yep. The Bizarre WTF Story of Turbo Teen. I'm watching that right after this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks, everybody. I think that's that's. Yeah. I think we're about done just, with this yeah, first just episode. Oh, yeah. Covers it. Yeah. Next episode: Black Sunday and Turbo Team. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, our email is uh, somewhere. I don't know. We'll, 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 email. We'll post it somewhere. Matt yeah. at level zero NPCs dot com. Yeah. Uh, get us there. Uh, if you got any ideas for the show, if you have anything you want to talk about, let us know. Um, we're ho- hopefully you enjoy this, and yeah. if you didn't, well, you know, you give us another chance, okay? Yeah, but don't become that serial unlike a, a dislike. Oh a yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, no, don't no become dislike. a car either. It looks yeah, like it's yeah. a horrible, horrible transformation. There's one shot I see when he transforms yeah. into the car. He actually just looks like. Uh, a human's torso just hang out the front end of the hood of a car. <laughs> Sincerely, given the option to have a vehicle mode as a superpower, I think I might choose no superpower instead. <laughs> <laughs> like, even even if even if there were no other superpowers on the table, and I could like, it's not between vehicle mode and flight, or vehicle mode and laser eyes, or any other superpower. I might just choose baseline humanity over vehicle mode. I just <laughs> genuinely, most vehicles like <laughs> they're only more durable than a human being in some contexts. Mm. <laughs> like human beings survive car crashes easier than cars do. That's true, but they're designed that way. It's, I know, I know, but just saying, it's. But yeah, you know. and if all the transformations are that disgusting, yeah, I, 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 I might bow out. 
<laughs> there, I'm glad I could uh, ruin this for everybody. Uh, so uh, one, next week, one, everybody. one final thing. Uh, Luke's uh, Luke's Amazon drone form would be the reverse of Turbo Team, where you would just turn your limbs into propellers, and then your body would just kind of scrooge up on itself and become... <laughs> Yes. I wonder if they went with like I don't know much about Turbo Teen. I I I only have seen like a little bit of it. But I wonder if they abandoned the temperature control things after a while and he could just do it. Like that seems like something they would abandon. It's a power that's barely helpful at will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. Well, I mean, like, being a wear car would just be bad in general. Like, on a particularly hot day when you were, like, trying to sleep in or something like that, <laughs> you just turn into a car, ruin your bedroom. <laughs> yep, yep. Kill a significant other by mistake. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you kill a lot of family, that's for sure. <laughs> well, on that, on that pleasant note. Thank you yeah. for what, or uh, thank you for listening, everybody. This isn't a visual medium. <laughs> Podcasts are not a visual medium. Were you guys staring at your device screen, watching the waveform or the, the audio visualization device? Because you should be. It's the only way to enjoy this. Uh, all right, we'll catch you next week, everybody. Thanks for uh, using your tuning knobs mm. to tune in. Thanks for using your ears and your hearts. <laughs> <laughs>